Welcome back to NCAA play in action. The Patriot Conference and Fordham taking on the Northeast Conference and St. Francis. And right now the red flash by five over the Rams after 20 minutes of play. Welcome back to Loretto, PA. Bob Carpenter with Larry Conley. And all we talked about before the game was Isolino, but Anderson is the guy that's the subject of conversation around this building right now. Well, Joe Anderson probably played as good a first half as he's played all year. Mike Isolino only scoring three points in this first half. But really, i got to give Joe Anderson credit. Not only his 18 points, but he got him a lot of different ways. Isolino helped him a lot with some very key passes. And let's take a look at one of those right now. You'll see how Isolino can handle the basketball. He had four assists in the first half. Look at this excellent pass all the way to the other side of the floor. Joe Anderson, the recipient, buries it. But Anderson also has the ability to take anybody he wants one-on-one. -on -one. Here he does it without a pass and decides to take the ball to the inside. He floats by Lopez, avoids the charge, draws a foul, and gets the basket on those very nice, convenient rims. Anderson outstanding in the first half. Six of 11 from the field, but a rather quiet 10 for Damon Lopez of Fordham. Yeah, the, the source hit a deck right there. He got 10 points, which was not bad in the first half, but really didn't come on, I thought, until the latter stages of that first half. Field goal shooting about the same. Free throw shooting not a huge factor so far. Three pointers have been, though. Turnovers are even, but points in the paint are not. And Larry, this is a complete surprise because Fordham's strength is down low. Yeah, when you sit and you analyze this game, you take a look and see where their strengths are. I thought Fordham's strength was going to be on the inside, rebounding and points in the paint. Look at this. Seven offensive rebounds, ten defensive for St. Francis, only three offensive for Fordham, and nine defensive for the Rams. St. Francis doing yeoman's work on the inside. So the Rams of uh, Nick McCarter taking the floor in the second half, knowing that in the first 20 minutes, Joe Anderson and company have beaten them at their own game. You know what this forces you to do? If you're Florida, you have to rethink your defense. Do you go out now and challenge Anderson and maybe concentrate more on him than you do Isolino? That could be dangerous. Yeah, you might be giving up threes instead of twos. Lopez down low. Mike Rice, as he has most of the night, running the Fordham offense. Not scoring a whole lot, but he leaves that to Jean Prelo and Damon Lopez. Jim Barron's decided to start the second half in a man-to-man -man defense, too. A very tough man-to-man. -man. -man. Herzog from Buckner, trying to back in Benich. Rice has it, 15 on the shot clock. No reason to panic, though. Only down by five. And oh, yeah. Three of that disappears right there. Rice was not sure if he was behind the line. He turned around to see if the official signaled the three. Yes, they have. Great start. Mike Rice with a big bucket out front. Again, a guy that doesn't shoot a whole lot. Rice only averaging four a game. Points number three, four, and five on that basket. We can tell Mike Sr. is dead. He's doing fine. Doing well. Baseline left. It won't go for Anderson. Is that a bad omen? Kind of shot he was making before halftime. Prelo in excellent position to grab that ball. Good pass by Rice. To Buckner, short on the three. Anderson rips down his fourth rebound of the night. He's got Fink inside. Now he reverse dribbles right into the hand of Lopez, who taps it for Prelo. Tried to do a little too much with the ball that time. Prelo for Rice, who slashes in. Lopez misses the follow slam. Well, Herzog's done a nice job on Isolino in this basketball game. He has shadowed him from the opening tip. They're giving up Herzog's offense so he can play defense. He only had two in the first half. He averages 13. But Isolino coming in 24 a game. Now he penetrates and kicks it for Hilbert for three. Push off. over the top. Yep. It's Tom Bennett pushing off of Buckner for the rebound. Now Bennett has fouled out in six games this year, so uh, that's not unusual for him to make a foul. Take a look inside. Tom Bennett. Tom Bennett inside on the pass. Isolino gets it to the outside. The pass to John Hilbert right here. He just misses. Got it with the right arm, but he pushed off with the left. Fordham could tie it with a two. Lead with the three. Rice gets it back from Buckner. Challenges Anderson. Does a 360 and scores. <laughs> How about the offensive show he's putting on right now? Five of his seven points in the first two and a half minutes since halftime in a tie game again. Last time they were knotted up was at 17. Rizzolino tried to go all the way, ran into Rice and Lopez. Official said play on. 
Tom Wolfe's down on the baseline was the referee looking right at it. And Buckner gets the transition basket. Nice pass again by Mike Rice. He penetrated through the defense. The guy's floating. Buckner's the trailer. Got him the ball. Nice play. A 7-0 run for Fordham at the start of the second half. Forces Jim Barron to call a timeout less than three minutes in. 17.08 to go, and Fordham on top by two. Well, let's take a look at a couple of ways that you can score from penetration. One is Mike Rice handling the basketball here. Watch the drive down inside the 360. Good roll, little fingertip right over the rim in the net. The second way is when you penetrate, sometimes you don't have the shot. you got to find a teammate to give it up to. Again, the 360 move, good penetration, and a good drop-off that time to Buckner. Mike Rice now with seven points and eight assists in the game. So he's responsible for about two plus dozen points out there for Fordham this evening. There's Hilbert. He had a chance to shoot it, and he laid it off. The miss by Tom Bennett. I thought he was going to keep it and go all the way to the glass. He had an opening on the right side. Well, sometimes you get a little too uh, unselfish. Instead of uh, giving the ball back out, you've got a two-foot shot taken. I'll tell you, Lopez could have offered that shot, too. He might have been thinking about that. Lopez has had 93 blocks this year. Rice anticipates an intercept. And then on the ensuing play, the foul on Rice. No, no. It's on Isolino. Isolino, yeah. One official was pointing at Rice before they realized it was Isolino. A unanimous call. Get a good triumvirate out there. Tom Lopes, Eric Leroy Hendricks, and Art McDonald working out there tonight. They haven't had any problems keeping control of this one. Oh, good screen by Lopez on Isolino. Buckner. Yeah. Drains the three. Some hundred or so Fordham fans are here from the Bronx, and they're celebrating now. Their team is on now a 10-0 run. I figure 100 people from the Bronx is worth 3,000 from anywhere else, right? They make enough noise. Fordham back into that 2-3 zone. Francis has continued to work the perimeter. They're a good shooting team from the outside, but so far in the second half, we haven't seen much of it. Silver for Isolito. Penetrates, Bennett, and a reach foul. Looks like number three on John Prelo. How often do you see guys reach in and always hack down on the ball? You know, I've always felt like oftentimes when you go in there and you get a chance, the ball's in your face, instead of slapping down, slap up. That way you knock the ball up in the air. Keep the momentum of the shooter going up, too. Hilbert just got it in for Bennett in time. We're better than four minutes into the second half. St. Francis without a point. Got that opening again in that Fordham zone right in the middle, right at the free throw line. Those guards are very extended. There's Alito drives, and it's a defensive foul on Lopez. Number two on Damon as Isolino went right at it. Mike Isolino is one of those type of players when you stop and say, well, he's a great three-point shooter, but can he do anything else? Yes. He can handle the ball and he can penetrate. I'll give you a great stat on him. How about 237 free throw attempts this year? And he's made 89% of them. So he will take it to the basket and he takes it strong. Mighty Mike. He probably will not score 30 tonight. But when he had 32 against Fairleigh Dickinson over the weekend, it was the ninth time this year he's gone 30 or more. Make you a bet. Ball doesn't touch the rim. If it does, it goes in anyway here. Nothing but net. You win. <laughs> Isolino with five. Substitution coming up. Dewey Stinson back in, a junior guard. They'll sit free low down with his three fouls, and that's a significant move for Nick McCartick because Prelo is a guy that he has to have in the game in the closing minutes. Well, he's won some big games for them right at the end. Again, we talked about it in the first half, that big shot against Holy Cross, that three-pointer to die to victory over there. So finally, on those free throws, St. Francis breaks the zero they had registered in the first four and a half minutes. And oh, a Mike. fadeaway. Mike Rice is on fire. Turn out the score. Seven of his nine here in the second half. Gilbert and Lopez thinks better of it. 
pretty good movement right now by that Fordham zone. And Gander extended. Look how far right is Alan Isolino. He's forced him all the way to the mid-court line. Gilbert, being watched by Buckner there. Stay in the zone. Anderson from the left side. That's a three. 21 for Joe. Billy Simpson was upset. He felt like somebody should have been covering his zone out there. Lopez catches it. Whips it around Fink. Nothing there for Buckner in the corner. Here comes Rice. In the corner. Buckner watched by Hilbert. Anderson out on top against Rice. Shot clock will go down under 20. St. Francis man-to-man -man defense is really keeping that ball away from uh, Lopez on the inside. They want to try to get it to him, but they're having difficulty getting it there. Lopez lays down Isolino and gets the foul. He just rammed into him. And that'll be number three on Damon Lopez. Bob, I gotta tell you, I was watching that play as it was developing. Isolino saw Lopez making that move right down the lane and set himself up to draw that charge. Watch Lopez make the pass and the cut. This is where you know and your scouting team. Look at this. Uh, it's a pretty good acting job, too. Lopez will sit down. And Kevin McBride, a 6'9 senior out of Flushing, New York, played with some guys like Kenny Anderson and Archbishop Malloy into the game. He's number 45, right in the middle of that zone. Well, good recovery by Rice that time to get out top. Speaking of recoveries, how about St. Francis? A 10-0 run against them. Now they've come back to get within two. Isolino had his pass cut off by Kevin McBride. McBride made a nice play inside. Isolino's been able to go in there several times today and get that ball off. Herzog to Stinson, reach in foul, number three on Antoine Patterson. A lot of action today with the play-in games, and that's tonight. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the MEAC against the Southland, Northeast Louisiana. Tim Brando and Dick Vital there at 7.30 right after Sports Center. And then at 9.30, the Big South with... USC Carolina, Coastal Carolina against Jackson State of the SWAC, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. That'll be Mike Gorman and Billy Raftery at 9.30 Eastern time tonight. Bob Carpenter with Larry Conley in Loretto, Pennsylvania. It's Fordham of the Patriot League over St. Francis College of the Northeast Conference, 45-43. You know, Bob, I gotta tell you, I am really... But one of my favorites uh, leagues is the Patriot League. I, I, got, I was getting tired of big this and big that. We were, we were next, our next move was gargantuan or mammoth. I mean, we were big everything all over the country, but uh, I like the Patriot League. I like the sound of it. And a true Patriot, Jean Frilo, checks back in. Stinson, one of two for the line, takes a seat. It's a three-point Fordham lead with 13.33 to go. You know, the Northeast Conference changed their name back in the 88-89 season. They used to be the ECAC Metro. Anderson buries the three. 24 for Joe Anderson. Joe can beat you a lot of ways. The Patriot League has Navy coming in next year. Last year, some of the teams from the MAC went to the Patriot, Fordham along with Army and Holy Cross. And then the midshipmen will come aboard next year. A tie game with just over 13 minutes to go. Prelo well short with the three. Anderson running. He's having fun out there tonight. Nothing oh, that is a double dribble. Strachan. Finger roll. Might have been. I thought he put it on the floor, and then nobody hit it out of his hand. And he turned around and dribbled it again. Strachan's first points. He had three assists in the first half. And St. Francis College back up by two. Nice comeback on the red flash. Turns off. Turn around. Can't tie the game. Anderson pulls it down. Golden Jones. Offensive foul on Anderson. His second. I think maybe the adrenaline got out of control on that one. Yeah, you got to give it up sometimes. What Joe Anderson, right? Look at that stride. I mean, he is stretching it out there. Good position right here. Good draw on the charge. Pretty play down inside. Jean Trillo. Anderson not in foul trouble, though. Only his second. He'll get a breather with 12.20 to go. And Fordham back down the floor, trailing by two. Red flash going that man-to-man. -man. 
Lopez wants the ball. He's calling for it. Look at Strachan talking at Prelo, who lets it go. And then Prelo on his back. That is foul number four. I'm going to tell you something, Larry. That play started before the shot because Strachan was in Prelo's face talking to him. Well, they've had a little bit of thing going on all evening. Well, that's a big loss right now. Prelo having to go to that bench with 12.03 left to go in the second half. They'll need his services at some point. Look at that. You see uh, Nick McCarthy over there saying, think. You cannot commit a fourth foul. Especially after you've missed the shot and go right over the top of the guy who is guarding you. Forward and back man-to-man -man now. They've changed defenses. Rice cutting off Strachan. Hilbert in the left wing. Takes on Dewey Stinson. There's Isolino for three. Bench is giving a lot of high fives over there. And Fordham calls a timeout. They made their run. St. Francis making its run. And the red flash up by five. In the rain of a rather dreary Pennsylvania March afternoon, the glory days remembered of Maurice Stokes. He died April 6, 1970, after that injury that he sustained in NBA play. It was a long battle. He tried to come back from that injury and just could not. But his alma mater coming back strong with an 11-1 run, Larry, to answer that 10-0 run of Fordham at the start of the second half. It's really been a seesaw affair. Francis fairly well dominated the first half. Both clubs started off the second half hot. Lopez cannot answer. Air ball with Fink guarding it. And now Fink is having words with Lopez. Is Alino. Nice Fink. Pass. And Lopez fouls him. And that will be his fourth. And they're having even more words now. That's going to be a technical foul. I think Fink's going to get a technical. That's the worst thing that could happen to the home team. Now, Bob, take a look. I'll tell you what this is all about. Watch Isolino make the move. Now, he goes up, gets fouled right there by Lopez. He sees it. Now, watch the drawing start. Well, we ended it right there. Now, watch it. Look at him. Now, he's pointing at him, drawing with him. They want to reduce that verbiage. And right then, Artie McDonald said, I've heard enough. You get one. Two shots for Fink. Now, what this does is create a situation where you end up with a jump ball because you've got two here. Well, actually, that's a foul here. Then you've got a technical foul on the other end, so Fordham will get the ball on the technical. Things better make the free throws, or he'll really be in the doghouse. Right now, his team is up by five with 11.09 to go. Fourth foul on Lopez, and immediately they give away that emotion that they gathered with that whistle. Bob, the officials this year have really tried to get the players to cut down on the taunting. There have been a number of situations this year that I have seen where clubs have actually been penalized for players taunting other players. Artie McDonald said, I've heard enough. We're not going to do anymore, so he slapped the technical on Mike Fink. The good thing about this for Fordham, they'll get the ball, but they can name their shooter, and Rice will shoot the tees. Mike Rice into double figures. This could be a dramatic turnaround in this basketball game. It actually just gave Fordham two free shots because they were going to get the ball after the missed free throws if they had rebounded the misses. So now it's a three-point game. Fordham could get it back to one or tie on this possession. St. Francis led by five and got the fourth foul on Lopez, but they've given it away. Although Lopez has to sit down for a while. They call on Sanford Jenkins down on the post. Here's Rice driving. Short. Rebound. Tom Bennett. St. Francis continues to do nice work on that backboard. Here's Isolino. Nice move. Isolino with seven of his ten here in the second half. Buckner can't answer with the three. Players tumbling in, and it looked like Hilbert cut under Dewey Stinson. Bob, I think that's a good call right there. Hilbert really did move underneath of him. Go back and take a look at the move by Isolino. No, he's not just a three-point shooter. He can take it to the hoop, too. He went by Herzog on this play. 
Tried to get a little help from the inside, but he kicked it off the glass. Sanford Jenkins was right there to try to help. Forget it. He got it up and in. Makes no difference when you're 6-7 to Isolito. Cordon down by five again with a makeshift lineup out there. Lopez and Prelo, their two big scorers, on the bench with four fouls. Inside, Jenkins, nice catch, got the roll. There come the rims again. I'll tell you what, it's a roll, and a roll, and a roll, and a roll. Is Alito holding up one finger now? We're down to the halfway point in the second half. Ten minutes to go, home team by three. A berth in the NCAA at six. Anderson, he's playing like it's the final four. 26 for Joe. What an afternoon that young man's having. From everywhere. He scored from everywhere. Down low, Buckner to Herzog. Herzog pushed off. That will be his first. One of the concerns you always have when you've got that lob pass inside is the guy who's catching it always wants to take that off arm and push off to go get the ball. Isolino will watch as two of his teammates, Benich and Hilbert, sit down. Steve Strachan is back, so is Antoine Patterson. Isolino out there with those two, Fink, and down the floor, Joe Anderson. Isolino looked over Strachan and says, I'll take it myself. Now Ford has changed defenses again. Be very careful when you've got these two guards out front. Strachan and Isolino can't penetrate it quickly, get into that center lane, and get inside of that zone. Strachan, a starter, as a freshman two years ago, but when he became a sophomore, Isolino showed up, putting him into reserve duty. But they don't lack much experience with him out on the floor. Anderson, a couple of dribbles. He is unbelievable. 29 for the senior. He's got fully one half of their points. Herzog tries to catch it. Knocked out of bounds as hustling on defense was Antoine Patterson. I don't think you and I have seen a player this year this hot in a basketball game. Well, not for this long. Big night of play-ins coming up this evening, and tomorrow championship week continues for the Transamerica, the OVC, and the Atlantic 10. That's right over in... State College PA with Penn State hosting George Washington. Game times 4.55, 7.30, and 9.30 with a half hour of Sports Center at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Tommy standing by with an identical block for you tonight on ESPN before our two play-in games coming up later. St. Francis packing that zone back in now. Stinson can't hit it. Now he has it to Buckner. Buckner puts up the three. Stinson gets it back. Good hustle by Fordham. They need a basket, Larry. Down by eight, and those were a couple of big offensive rebounds. Well, they got it back, and now with a chance to at least cut it down to six, maybe five, if they can bury a three. Buckner for Rice. Dumps it off for Jenkins. There was a foul. Looks like Steve Strachan with his first. You know, with every, as we look at Isolino, with every rotation of that basketball across the floor, as they push the ball in, that St. Francis zone begins to collapse even more and more. It's very difficult to make an even a close pass inside. Damon Lopez is back. So is Jean Prelo. So Jim Barrett says, your breather is over, Isolino. You're back in there. So the three key players in the game all check back in. Although you can't forget Joe Anderson. If they're the key... He's the safe. <laughs> He's the door. Fordham is going to have to take a look at maybe perhaps trying to work it from the outside. Jenkins, high post. Tried to bank it in. Antoine Patterson, who's played well off the bench for Jim Barron tonight, with the rebound. Hilbert, short with the three. Patterson bats away at it. Kept it alive. Who touched it last? Prelo for Fordham. Good hustle that time by Prelo and Anderson. Anderson came up with a little slap. Got it right off his back. Timeout on the floor. 7.33 to go. St. Francis College and Loretto PA going crazy. Leading by eight. It's championship week live on ESPN.
the air. It'll be rock and roll time, show time. It'll be unbelievable, baby. Get it, T.O., baby. Rock and roll time. ESPN's Championship Week keeps going with a fantastic Friday featuring the ACC Tournament Quarterfinals. Plus, number one UNLV in a Big West Tournament Shootout, live Friday on ESPN. It'll be awesome with a capital A! Fordham has won 24 games this year, Larry. The most since 71 when, with some familiar faces, they won 26 ball games. Well, the guy on the right is pretty obvious, Digger Phelps. Do you know who that guy is? Yeah, P.J. Carlissimo in the days before he shaved. And where's, he still doesn't shave. Where's the beard, P.J.? <laughs> That was a great club, 71 NCAA team. Fordham's been to the tournament three times, 53, 54, and with those 26 wins in 71. There is a feeling among some that even if they lose this game, they still might get an NCAA bid on the heels of wins over Seton Hall, Vanderbilt, and Xavier this year. Well, we talked about it in the first half. I really feel like they deserve a bid. They've had a good year. St. Francis playing a terrific game right now. They're on a 15-4 run. This has been a second half of runs. Jim Barron maybe wants to sit on the ball a little bit here. Obviously, his club in no hurry. Anderson again! Off to the left and short. Lopez the rebound. Nick McCarchuk wants a basket this time down the floor. Coaches hate to trail by more than a point a minute. And that's a two. That puts him down by six with 6.45 to go. But again, it was Fazan, and St. Francis just kind of backs off of him and lets him take the shot. Dave Fazan off the bench, doubling his season average tonight with seven points. Rosalino faked the three, took the two. A dozen with nine since that time. Buckner, long on the three. Lopez has it, kicks it for Fazan. Three low on the left wing. Want him in a hurry to try to get caught up here. They've got 6'10 left to play in this basketball game. And you know what, Larry? The time has been moving so quickly tonight. That can disappear in a heartbeat. We've had very few stoppages of play. The ball moving by Fordham. Free low for three. Missed it by 20. Joe Anderson pulls it down. But right now, St. Francis' strategy has to be to want to sit on the basketball. They've got an eight-point lead at home. They're 16-1 and one in this building this year. They're in no hurry. Their only loss here at home when they took on the Pitt Panthers. The man with a good steal in the corner. Block or charge? Got a loss. The man traveled before the contact with Tom Bennett. And Nick McCarchuk can't believe it. In the corner, the man with a good handle right here. Now that, that had to be back in the corner when he walked because he put the ball on the floor right before the contact. Well, there either had to be a block or a charge. I didn't see any kind of walking at all there. Yeah, it was a late call at best. 5.35 to go. Eight-point game. The team on top with the ball. St. Francis shooting well in the second half, up over 60%. You notice right there, he's leaning to avoid that trap. He saw it coming, immediately kicked the ball off and got it away from him. Finnick standing at the top of the circle. This guy is so smart with the basketball. He's terrific with it. You know, he only played about six or seven minutes a game for Bruce Parkhill in those two years at Penn State. He must have done a lot of quality time watching on the bench. He really anticipates well for a guy who's really only a second-year starter. Florida needs to start looking back to the inside. We've not heard much from Lopez. If they need to get back in this game, they've got to do it with the big guy. Prelo, air ball, there. rebound, Bennett. And now we're down under five minutes to go. Rosalino, Gilbert will work it around. They've still got 32 on the shot clock. Oh, yeah, they're going to sit on this, baby. They're in no hurry. Let's play with it a little while. Give it to Joe. And to Fink. You know, they've done a good job of recovering, Larry. Fink's technical didn't hurt them that badly now. No, but Isolino really has kind of picked his game up here in the second half. He said he had nine points in the second half, and it's really been one of the reasons they've done as well as they have. Shot clock at 10. It rims out on Lopez with the rebound. Lopez has no points in the second half. And only 4-10 to go. Buckner in the corner. They just can't get the ball inside. Buckner from outside. Short with the three. 
hustling to get it free low. Bob, I'm not sure that's the way to do it right now. They've got a chance to go inside right here, although the defense have really packed back in there to keep the ball away from Lopez. Each team with six fouls. They're going to let the van shoot. Here's Alito on free low. Dribble fake, baseline underneath. He almost traveled, and Buckner drains the two. Buckner may be a better shooter from straight out than he is from the corners. He's had difficulty making that shot from down deep on the sideline, but not out front. Six-point game, 3.30 in county. St. Francis College of Loretto, Pennsylvania, out of the Northeast Conference against Fordham of the Patriot League, with the winner getting the automatic NCAA bid, and Jim Barron of St. Francis uses his second timeout. 3.17 to go, 28 on the shot clock, and they come back leading by six. The Red Flash mascot with a Final Four song singing here during... <laughs> During the break, Vegas, you're next. Right now, they'll settle for a bit. You see the points of the paint. Fordham with 12, St. Francis with 20. Bob, I want to pass along. Uh, basketball lost a great friend yesterday, a young man by the name of Harvey Reed. And I say young because he was young at heart. He was the coach at Pike High School in Wilson, North Carolina. He won 818 games. He was the leading winning program in the state of North Carolina High School. He was a great friend, and I will miss him dearly. Well said, Larry. In over 42 years. How many young lives affected by that outstanding coach? Isolino does it again. 14 in the game. He has 11 since halftime. And it's an eight-point St. Francis College lead with 2.40 to go. Boy, the St. Francis zone is really packing it back on the inside. Now Lopez has to come out top to get the ball. Lopez and Trilo, zero points in the second half. It's been one of the reasons St. Francis has been able to build this eight-point lead. Herzog with the jumper. Almost got the bounce. Steve Tracken has it. And St. Francis is grabbing control of this one now. Isolino waving him off, saying, I'll take it myself. Herzog now with a real problem. He cannot defend Isolino out top. He knows he's got to come out and get him. And you can't put him on the line with the game on the line. Right side, Patterson almost lost it. And he double dribbled to try to keep it. will check out and Tom Bennett came back in for St. Francis. Well, Bennett and Anderson both back in the lineup now. He's, he's basically gone with a, a taller lineup in here. Defensively, they're better off with this group on the inside. First off, will lead for Porta. They've got Sanford Jenkins back in there. Under two minutes. Warren doesn't have a lot of time to play with his basketball. They've got to make some action occur. Rice for Lopez, trapped on the baseline, almost traveling. Prelo, challenge, and that's the foul on Steve Tracker. Oh, what a fast break for St. Francis. They had a breakaway. Here's Alito going for a layup, and they're going to get a foul on the other end. I think it was a good call, Larry. Strachan took a big gamble there to try to make the steal. Yeah, you'll see it, Lopez trying to get the ball out of the corner right there. Now watch Strachan right there. He committed the foul on Prelo. Look at his Lino look back and go, oh, no, I had a layup. And that's the seventh team foul on St. Francis. That's something Fordham needed very badly because now they can score points with the clock not moving. Prelo with 11 tonight, only his first point of the second half. John Hilford will check back in for the red flash, replacing Steve Strachan. Strachan two points with about a half dozen assists tonight. It's a little disconcerting, but you don't look at the hands. You're not, as, not as big as other gyms, but they're moving just as well. Anderson has the rebound for St. Francis. And the possession arrow will go to the home team. You know, I'm not sure why you want to stand there and hold the basketball. I think if you get in a situation like that, you want to get rid of the ball. Get out of there. Don't take the chance of getting tied up. Here's a forward with the press. Anderson fouled in the backcourt. And that will be the 17 foul on Fordham. And there won't be any last-minute heroics for Sean Freelow tonight. He is gone. 
Missouri, of course, is now Nick McCartrick to make a decision about which way he wants to go. He may want to go with a smaller flipper lineup. When he's behind like this, he's going to have to come out and press. I think Francis has got some great guards to handle that basketball. You know, you and I have done a lot of games this year in some big arenas. The small arena in college basketball is just about as much fun as the big one. These people have just absolutely loved this game, and they've had a great year. Well, an unknown program in an unknown town. And some folks will find out about St. Francis College tonight if they hold on. They lead by seven with 138 to go. And at the line, Joe Anderson looking for his 30th point. for Herzog. Porta needs to score very quickly. Weiss double team. Buckner works for a shot left side for Herzog. Good shot. He drains the three and they get a chance to call the timeout. Big bucket there. That got him within six. Herzog with only a second field goal tonight. It's a six point game. 122 to go. ESPN's championship week continues. First of three play-in games on this Wednesday, March the 6th. St. Francis College with a chance to get into the NCAA. Each team has a timeout left. Each team is in the bonus situation or penalty, if you will, for free throws. The possession arrow goes to the visiting team, Fordham, with 1.22 to go. Jim Barrett probably preaching a lot of fundamentals out there right now because if they don't make any silly mistakes, they've got the NCAA in their grasp. First NCAA bid in the history of the school, Bob. They've only been to the NIT three times and not in 33 years. Say what, minute 22 can be a long time. It's this jockey down here on our right is playing twist and shout. You make me want to shout. The school's too small to have a band, so they have a disc jockey. The word is he'll go to the NCAA with the team if they get the bid. Here we go, final minute 22. Strachan gets it in from Hilbert. Now it's Benich for Inzolino. That's the man in whose hands they want the basketball. Just make sure you don't get the five-second call. That's why they fouled Hilbert right away as Rice went after him. But Hilbert, no struck, slouch, a 76% free-throw shooter. Well, you may want to say you want to foul Strachan right there, but look at Anderson, look at Hilbert, look at Benich, look at Inzolino. All these guys can shoot free-throws. As a team, 75% the red flash. They'll check one of their big men, Antoine Patterson, back in. Strachan will take a seat. John Hilbert, a senior out of Loveland, Ohio. Jenkins with the rebound. One of the rare times that free throw or any shot hasn't rolled in off of that rim. This is where they really miss having free low in the game. Fordham. Somebody's going to have to pick it up for Fordham. you got to figure Buckner's the man to shoot the three. But Isolino all over it. He can't hit it. Anderson rebounds and he draws the foul. Jenkins on his back. Clock down to 54 seconds. You know, there was really no reason to pimp the three right there. They had a chance to get the two and come back with their press. I think maybe often teams maybe want to catch up too quickly. Had a chance to go for two that time instead of three. Lopez was open on the inside. It is now only 10 points away from tying Maurice Stokes all-time scoring record here. Looks like he might get a chance to do it in the NCAA tournament. And again, we think the chances of Fordham getting into the tournament, win or lose here, are excellent. It's a good basketball team. Has played a good, a good schedule and had a good record. There's something about this St. Francis team at home. Only Pitt has beaten them here. A win here would make them 17 and one at home this year. That 
that's not what St. Francis wanted. A foul with the ball and the clock moving. Strachan with his third. That's an interesting call. I kind of thought maybe that was a little touch foul out front. But, you know, maybe I, when I see that foul occur, I've seen it all year long. The, the hand check or the body check with the hand, there are a lot of guards doing that this year. Need to be enforced a little bit more, I think. Dave Butner at the line, a 68% shooter. His 11th point of the night. Now this can get them within five. Press, a turnover, a three, a couple of deuces. They still have a timeout to work with. Now Dewey Stinson back in for Nick McCarthy. Jenkins will sit on. It's a five-point game with 46 seconds to go. Immediately the foul by Rice as he gets all over Tom Benich. Rice, foul number four. Only one second off the clock. So that's the only thing right now Fordham can do. They've got to go out on that press and try to create some turnovers or get fouls and send them to the line. Jim Barron right there giving instructions uh, to his club. Tom Benich, a senior from Lancaster, PA. 77% from the line. I'll tell you what, I would hate to run into either one of these clubs in the first round next week. Bennett is the guy who got the chicken pox last year. That spread the epidemic and forced their game with Wagner to be canceled and then rescheduled. And they had a big struggle when he was out of the lineup. Doesn't score a lot, but a very valuable rebounder. He drilled both of them with 45 to go and seven-point lead for St. Francis College. Now Fordham needs three scores. Right, dumps it down. Lopez lost it. Strachan has it. Out of bounds. St. Francis will keep it as Nick McCarchuk is all over. Hart McDonald on the other side. Get the ball in and get it up the floor. Throw the foul. If it's Rice, he's done. Well, Bob, I can promise you one thing. It looks as if St. Francis is going to win this game, and this crowd is going to hit that floor. I know it. <laughs> They're going to call the foul on Fred Herzog, so Rice is still alive. Well, you know, this floor is an interesting story, Larry, now that you mention it. This is the old floor from the Hartford Civic Center. It went to Cornell University for two and a half years, and it's first year here. So this floor has seen some NCAA basketball on it. They never played on wooden floors here before. And Bennett with his fifth point of the night. Eight points to spread. 25 to go. Rice out of control, but his team keeps possession. Well, Fordham now needs to go for threes. If I were St. Francis, I would guard the threes and let him have the twos. Rice in for Lopez. He got caught flat-footed. Is Alino Buckner chasing? That'll do it. Lopez at the other end. But time is running out on Fordham. Six seconds to go and a turnover. St. Francis is going to get their bid. Timeout, Jim Barron of St. Francis College. The victory would push them to 24 and 7 on the year, 17 and 1 at home. They just won their first season title in the Northeast with a 13 and 3 record. And their first tournament title when they beat Fairleigh Dickinson here on Saturday, 97-82 on ESPN. But this is the night. 
You know, Bob, Jim Barron has got to be so pleased with the way this club has performed. These seniors, they started out the year, their freshman year, at 7 and 20. They have now gone this year to 24 and 7, which is the most wins St. Francis has ever had. And they've had some good names come through here. We talked about Maurice Stokes earlier. Norm Van Leer, class of 69, never got to go to the NCAA. Or the NIT, for that matter. Ball to come in bounds. Herzog takes the three. They let him. It's short. Lopez puts it back. And it's NCAA time for St. Francis College. What a great story tonight in tiny Loretto, PA. Absolutely right, Bob and Larry. Six-point victory over Fordham. Fordham, some thought, would have got into the tournament anyway. You have to wonder about that right now, though they did beat Seton Hall. But for St. Francis, their 24th win, the most ever, and they have the bid. They're in the field of 64. Our second game from Murray, Kentucky, or rather the Southland, Northeast Louisiana, against the Mideast champion from Florida A&M. Let's join Tim Brando and Dick Vitale. All right, John, I know it's tough for you to keep up with all these games. I mean, we've got zillions, and this one is going to be a great game. Florida.